The one I want to show you today, based on science, is that there's nothing wrong with fish oils. I've been giving them for years. They're a very, very good source of omega-3s. But when I discovered krill, I realized we got a better way to give it. It's more pure, it's safer, and it's got other benefits, and I'm going to go through that. So one of the biggest problems with the fish oils as a source of omega-3 is they are not really well absorbed. Their bioavailability is not nearly as good as a krill oil. So what are the challenges with fish oils? We all know that most physicians will say, listen, if you eat fish, mackerel, salmon, tuna, sardines, two or three times a week, you don't need fish oils. So here's the problem, and I see it in my own practice, because I've got the fish eaters. I have people that are very aware of eating healthy. I check their mercury levels, and they are high, especially the sushi lovers. So it's a major story. There's no point taking something that's supposed to be good for you if you're actually giving yourself a toxin. So we've got the problem of contaminants, and then we've got the problem from our dig digestibility, and I'm going to say this again and again. I think the biggest issue when you're comparing fish oils to krill oil, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, patient satisfaction. I've had many years where I've given fish oils. I've always been a believer. But about 40% come back and say, I can't take a doctor. I don't like the taste. It's giving me a fishy burping. And when you understand what's going on, you'll realize it's because the fish oils are not digested properly. They, they sit around in the stomach. They don't have phospholipids with them. And you land up getting rancidity. And rancidity means you're getting oxidation and it smells. So one of the major things, no matter what else you want to argue in terms of benefits, is ask the people. And I've had many patients, since I've sort of switched people over to krill, that say, I far prefer this. Let's look at krill. So what are the major differences, just molecularly in terms of what does krill have that a fish oil doesn't have? They both have omega-3s, but what krill has is this phosphatidylcholine addition, basically phospholipid. So it's extremely important that you understand the body likes phospholipids. Every cell membrane is made up of phospholipids. The body knows what to do with a phospholipid. It's fat soluble and it's water soluble. So it gets around in the system and it goes to where it goes a lot easier than something that's not water soluble. So what you've got when you actually take krill is you've got a phospholipid in the krill. It happens to be that's the natural state of krill. They have phospholipids in them. So it's because of that, there's much better bioavailability and absorption. You're not sitting with a rancid oil sitting in your stomach causing fishy burps. So here's the next thing that krill oil contains, and you should know about astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is a powerful carotenoid antioxidant. It's a free radical scavenger, and you can see 65 times more powerful than vitamin C, 54 times more powerful than beta carotene, 14 times more powerful than vitamin E. It's an antioxidant. It prevents oxidation of the, of the oil so that it's not sitting there rancid in your stomach. It also prevents oxidation while it's sitting in a bottle or it's sitting on the shelf. So these are advantages of krill. The phospholipid form is easily recognized and utilized in the body. Astaxanthin is a natural antioxidant. It's easier to take, smaller soft gels than once a day dose. No fishy aftertapes, burps, or indigestion, and no harmful levels of heavy metals or contaminants. I think when you take krill, you've got a superior bioavailability and digestibility. You've got much less or free of fishy burps, superior stability because of the antioxidant effect, superior sustainability compared to pulling the fish out. People are concerned about what are the krill and the whales. When you're pulling all the fish out of the ocean, that's actually a much bigger danger. Unfortunately, on top of that, you've got an issue with contamination. Improves the lipid profile and heart health. It reduces arthritis pain, relieves premenstrual pain and menopausal symptoms, improves concentration, depression, and mem memory. My bottom line is omega-3s are important for almost everybody and krill is a superior source of omega-3s. That's what it's about. This is not about fish oils, no good. It's just a better way to get your omega-3s.